Today we would be focusing on one of the major universities of India the ancient universities and that is Vikram Shila University now Vikram Shila University has been a magnificent university noted by a Tibetan scholar Taranath now when Taranath came here he called it as Vikram Shila Mahavir it was called as Vikram Shil because there was a yaksh named Vikram Shil who was present at this location however in India it got its uh, got its other important name as rajgir mahavira again this location has been important because it was the origin for buddhism and hinduism we have numerous sculptures and sculpts that have been found and traced from vikramshila university vajrayan buddhism had originated from vikramshila university this university has been named for its necromancy uh, witchcraft wizardry and black magics so those were some of the arts and crafts uh, Uh, and the unique characteristics that had been taught in Vikram Shila University in those days. Again, one of the most interesting thing about Vikram Shila University is we had King Dharmapal. Now, King Dharmapal was the pattern for Nalanda University as well as the Vikram Shila University. and it was supposed that the academic scholars and teachers used to move from one location to another and flip between nalanda and vikramshila university and these two one were one of the pioneer universities of this time now if we can look into the map we have vikramshila which is located at the Ani, uh, antichak village antichak village is very very close to bhagalpur nearly 50 kilometers away from bhagalpur in bihar so we have have the map of bihar and we can locate uh, the region of Ant antichak uh, village that is here now this village has its own significance because this was the region which was established by dharmapal and the reason for establishing this was again important it was because of the declining quality of scholars that were seen in nalanda university so there was a need to develop another major learning center and this learning center was nonetheless the vikramshila university it was as we said one of the major buddhist learning center and king dharmapal tried his best to establish this and recently uh, nalanda international university is supposed to be built on the ruins of the vikramshila university now who established and who destroyed this university has been very very important so as we said king dharmapal has the origin for the university and dharmapal's work have been very very important but this university was buried down by bhaktiyar khilji so it was established around 8th century destroyed around 12th century bc uh, 12th century ad and it was a period of nearly 400 years where this university sub, uh, survived and there were some of the notable developments This was one of the centers with more than 100 teachers and 1000 students and one of the major scholars was Atisha Dipankar now Atisha Dipankar has been known as the founder of lamism in Buddh uh, in Tibet and this lamism originated from Vikramshila University and therefore has been very very important the role of Atisht Dipankar the spread of lamism in uh, Tibet and the uh, sham traditions in Buddhism origin uh, originated in Vikram Shila University also uh, recently this whole university was first excavated by Lakshmikant Mishra and his works along with the archaeological survey of India have been important as we said uh, Vikram Shila was known for its Vajrayan Buddhism or also known as the Tantrayan Buddhism where necromancy black magic wizardry were some of the major topics that were talked taught besides that philosophy grammar metaphysics indian logic were some of the major subjects that were emphasized now lakshmikant mishra who hailed from patna university started the uh, archaeological survey in the regions of bhagalpur and 
later on on the lines of lakshmikanta mishra there was a series of excavation from 1960 to 1969 where uh, ruins of the vikramshila university were seen now in the ruins what was very very interesting was 208 cells were found and there were uh, nearly 80 cells that have been observed and preserved as of now by ntpc the national thermal power corporation kahalgaon along with the national cultural fund now each of these 80 cells were interesting because each cell had three beds to live and within the campus of the vikramshila university the ruins of the vikramshila university there were statues of taranath there were statues of loknath many buddha figures were found and there were also the uh inscriptions of old pala art that was seen uh, also there were uh, terracotta works that was seen and black basalt was used for making most of the uh, figures or most of the statues during that time along with the works on black basalt that was used there were decorations with uh, ornaments arrowheads draggers which was commonly seen in most of the figures now if we talk about the organization system in vikramshila university it was nonetheless very very interesting at the um, at one of the positions we had the abbot or the adhyakas uh, now next to it there were six gatekeepers these were at the east west north and south and then the first central and the second central location they were known as dwarpal or dwar pandit then there were the great scholars who were known as maha pandit the scholars who were known as pandit now these scholars were more than 100 then besides the scholars there were teachers or professors who were known as upadhyay or acharya there were more than 160 upadhyay or acharya that were part of vikramshila university and finally the students who were known as residential monks or bhikshus and they were more than 1000 now uh, as we said uh, this was one of the major uh, centers of learning and tantric perceptions the tantrayan buddhism was was taught here uh, we had uh, deepam uh, karbhandra who was one of the major uh, followers followed by jaya bhadra uh, who whose work have been seen now jaya bhadra was one of the monks who came uh, she came from sri lanka and was one of the major proponents of the chakra samvar tantra so various tantra and the various tantra vidyas were taught uh, in vikramshila university and besides that we had numerous other perceptors for example uh, shridhar bhav bhat were common scholars uh, or one of the major personalities of this region now when it comes to the excavations as we said we oh, the excavations to lakshmikant mishra from patna university who started the excavations along with bp sinha and archaeological survey of india and finally a huge monastery was found this monastery had a cuciform stupa in the center and a library building now library building was a little away on the south west corner of the university the uniqueness was that there was a narrow linkage to the library building and the library building had its own cooling system this was a kind of air conditioning system that was present in the ancient times the back walls of the library buildings had uh, the water from the uh, the nearby uh, cooling area that was provided into the region and because of the cooling of the back wall uh, the most important monuments were preserved in the library so library was extremely rich with numerous works and uh, Uh, the manuscripts that were preserved in the vikramshila university the whole of the excavation revealed that vikramshila university expanded in more than 100 acres and there was a common veranda which led to the various cells and there were places for confined meditation for the monks or the bhikshus and in each of the cell there were three bhikshus or the residential monks who were residing Uh, the region had a well drained 
or a well planned drainage system and the monasteries were seen in the uh, corners of the uh, main stupa also there were uh, animal figures that were seen for example monkeys elephants lion wolf bird uh, along with that we had statues and figures of hanuman buddha and various other deities um, uh, jambala marishi were seen in the vikramshila university works uh, if we look on to the architectural setup this had a close resemblance with sompura mahavira now sompura mahavira is again one of the major ancient universities which now lies in the present day bangladesh however dharmapal the king dharmapal is credited for the origin of these three universities the nalanda university vikramshila university and sompura mahavira which presently lies in the bangladesh region now however there was a significant difference in uh, the setup of these university a lot of concepts between vikramshila and sompura mahavira were very very similar however sompura mahavira in bangladesh had a central temple however vikramshila had a stupa so that means vikramshila was mainly focused on buddhism vikramshila the monastery was comparatively larger and had a fort like projections unlike the sompura mahavira which did not had this so there were most of the similarities with little of the differences that were seen and if we talk about uh, the future of the vikramshila university definitely this has been brought into adarsh monument scheme which is one of the schemes of government of india where more than 100 monuments have been taken into account uh, this has been considered as one of the parts of adarsh monument scheme the reason being uh, the origin of lamism in tibet originated from vikramshila so uh, Uh, the atishtha dipankar and the role in the spread of lamaism then we have the tantrayan or the vajrayan buddhism and its origin which had been uh, uh, taken into consideration from vikramshila university also government has announced as we said the nalanda international university or the new vikramshila university at bhagalpur with a cost of nearly 5 billion rupees uh, which would be allocated to the development preservation of the existing structure and the development of a new university in more than 500 acres of uh, land so this was about the vikramshila university very very important the ancient universities of india and we would be covering the other ancient universities in detail as well so stay tuned for many informative sections uh, in higher education have a wonderful day ahead